Chapter One. Beauty's family. A rich man lives in a big city near the sea. He has got three daughters and three sons. One daughter is called Beauty, because she is very beautiful. The other two daughters are called Rosalind and Hortensia. They are lazy and unfriendly. They like going out and having fun. They both want to find a rich husband. They do not like Beauty because she is beautiful. Beauty has got long red hair. She is kind and friendly. She likes staying at home and reading books. She also likes playing the piano. Beauty's father is a merchant. One day. He loses all his money because his ship is lost at sea. My dear children, he says sadly, I haven't got much money. We're poor. We must leave this big house and go and live in the country. Oh dear, say the two sisters. We are poor. This is terrible. What, What bad, bad luck! luck. Say the three brothers. We have to work now, says Beauty's father. Work? work, say the two sisters. No, we don't want to work, and we don't want to live in the country. They start to cry. <laughs> Beauty is sad, but she says, "Let's not cry." We can work and be happy without money. The family goes to the country and lives in a small house. Beauty gets up at four o'clock every morning to clean the house and cook. Then she washes the family's clothes in the river. The three brothers work in the country. Rosalind and Hortensia do not work; they do nothing all day. They sleep all morning. And walk in the woods in the afternoon. I'm unhappy, says Rosalind. I don't like the country because there's nothing to do. We can't go to the theatre and wear nice clothes, says Hortensia. And we haven't got any friends. Look at Beauty, says Rosalind angrily. She works. And she's happy in this terrible place. Beauty's father says, "Dear Beauty, you work a lot, and you're always happy. You're a wonderful daughter." Chapter Two, Beauty's Rose. A year later, Beauty's father gets an important letter. He calls his six children and says. Listen to this letter. Your ship is here. It is not lost at sea. Please come to the port. Everyone is happy. This, This is, is wonderful, wonderful news. news. Say the three sons. Yes, says their father. The ship with my goods is in the port. We are rich again, says Rosalind. We can buy beautiful clothes. We can go back to our big house in the city," says Hortensia. "I must go to the port today," says her father happily. "Oh, father," says Hortensia, "bring me some new clothes and new hats." "Yes," says Rosalind, "and some new shoes and jewels." Beauty's father looks at her and says, "What do you want, Beauty?" "Please, don't spend your money, father," says Beauty. "Just bring me a rose." Beauty's father gets to the port and finds his ship, but there are no goods on it. It is empty. "What bad luck!" he says angrily. I must go home and tell the children the bad news. On the way home, he crosses a big forest. It is snowing and windy. 
He is lost. Where am I? He thinks. Where can I go? I'm very cold and tired. He hears some wolves and he is afraid. Suddenly, he sees a big castle in the forest, and there are lights in the windows. Oh, good! He thinks. Perhaps the people in the castle can help me. He takes his horse to the stable near the castle. He knocks on the big door of the castle, but no one answers. He waits outside the door. Then he opens the door and goes inside. He sees a big hall with a fireplace. There is a long table with a lot of food on it. He is cold, and sits near the fireplace. How strange! He thinks. There's no one here. He is hungry and sits down at the table and starts to eat. Then he is sleepy. He finds a warm, comfortable bed and falls asleep. The next morning, he finds some new clothes near his bed. How nice! New clothes. He thinks. A kind person lives in this castle. He looks out of the window and is surprised. It's not snowing, and it's a beautiful day. He thinks. And there are flowers in the garden. He gets dressed and goes to the hall. There are biscuits, chocolate, and milk on the long table. He sits down and says, "Thank you for this lovely breakfast." He looks round but sees no one. He eats and decides to go home. He goes to the stable and gets his horse. In the garden, he sees some roses. Beauty wants a rose. He thinks. He takes a lovely one. Suddenly, he hears a terrible noise. He turns round and sees an ugly monster. Chapter three: The Beast. You're a bad man! cries the beast angrily. You come to my castle, and I save your life. You eat here and you sleep here. And then you take one of my beautiful roses. For this, you must die. Beauty's father starts to cry.、Uh, oh, sir, I'm sorry. You're very kind. Please don't be angry with me.、Uh, this rose is for one of my daughters. My name is not Sir. It is Beast. Please call me by my name. You talk about your daughters, then one of your daughters must die in your place. Oh no! Says Beauty's father. They're young, and they don't want to die. Then you must come back here and die. Says the Beast. I can wait three months. Do you agree to come back? Beauty's father agrees to come back. My daughters must not die. He thinks. I want to go home and see my children for the last time. Before Beauty's father leaves the castle, the beast talks to him. "I'm not bad," says the beast. "Go back to your bedroom. There is a big chest there. Fill it with everything you want, and it is yours." Beauty's father fills the chest with a lot of gold. Then he gets on his horse and goes home. When he is at home, he gives the rose to Beauty. Take this rose, Beauty, he says sadly. Let me tell you about my terrible adventure. He tells his children about the empty ship in the port, the castle in the forest, and the beast. Rosalind and Hortensia are angry with Beauty. They say. Father must die because you like roses. Beauty, no, says Beauty. Father is not going to die. I'm going to the Beast's castle. No, dear sister, say her three brothers. We're going to his castle, and we're going to kill him. 
No, that's not possible," says their father. "The beast is very big and strong. I'm old. I must go and die." But Beauty does not agree. She decides to go to the beast's castle. "No, father," she says. "You must not go. I want to go." "Never, my dear Beauty," says her father. "I'm not afraid." Says Beauty, "You must live and look after my brothers and sisters. They need you." Beauty's father thinks for a moment, then he says sadly, "All right, Beauty, you can go." Beauty's brothers are very sad, but Hortensia and Rosalind are not. The next morning, Beauty and her father go to the Beast's castle. Inside the castle, they see a long table with a lot of good food on it. Beauty and her father are not hungry, but they sit down and eat. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise. What's that terrible noise? asks Beauty. The beast is coming, says her father. Beauty sees the beast's ugly face. And she is terrified. Oh, this beast is really terrible! She thinks. The beast looks at her and says, "You're a brave girl." I'm very sorry about the rose from your garden," says Beauty quietly. The beast looks at Beauty's father and says, "You must go away tomorrow, and don't come back." Do you understand? Beauty's father looks at the beast and then at his daughter. Oh, Beauty! He says, "Please go home. Let me stay here." No, father," says Beauty. "We must be brave. We're both tired. Let's go and sleep now. Tomorrow morning you can go home to my brothers and sisters." That night. Beauty has a dream. In her dream, a good fairy says, "You're a good girl, Beauty, and you've got a kind heart. You want to save your father's life. You're going to be very happy one day." Chapter Four, Life at the Castle. The next morning, Beauty's father leaves the castle. He is crying. Don't cry, father," says Beauty. "Remember, I love you." "Goodbye, dear Beauty," says her father. Beauty is terrified. "The beast is going to eat me tonight," she thinks. "I want to enjoy my last day. I'm going to visit the garden of the castle." She goes to see the big garden, and she is surprised. It is a beautiful garden with a lot of lovely flowers. Then she goes to see the big castle. She looks in all the rooms. On one door she sees this sign, "Beauty's Room." She opens the door and sees a lovely room. There is a nice bed and a mirror on the wall. Beauty looks round and thinks, "There's a piano and a lot of books for me." How strange! Perhaps the beast doesn't want to eat me tonight. She takes a book and starts to read it. Suddenly, she sees these words on the pages. Welcome, Beauty. Don't be afraid. You're the queen here. Tell me everything you want. I only want to see my poor father," says Beauty. Suddenly, she sees her father in the mirror on the wall. He is very sad. She also sees her home and Hortensia and Rosalind. They are happy without Beauty. The beast is kind to me, she thinks. Why am I afraid of him? At twelve o'clock, she has lunch. After lunch, she goes to her room. What a beautiful piano, thinks Beauty. I want to play it. She plays some wonderful music on the piano. Then she looks at all the books in her room. 
Some of them have got pictures, and others have not. She takes a book about flowers and looks at the pictures of different flowers. Then she sees pictures of roses of all colours. Now I want to go to the garden and look at the lovely roses. She thinks. She goes to the garden and stays there all afternoon. She looks at the flowers and feels happy. At dinner time, she sits down at the long table, and then she hears the beast coming. She is terrified. Beauty, can I sit here with you? Asks the beast. You're the lord of the castle, says Beauty. And you're the queen, says the beast. Can I ask you a question? Yes, of course, says Beauty quietly. Am I very ugly? Asks the beast. Beauty does not know what to say. She looks at him and thinks for a moment. Well, yes, you are, says Beauty. But you're kind and polite. The beast looks at Beauty and smiles. You're right. I'm terribly ugly, but I'm kind. This is your home now, Beauty. Please don't be sad. Some men are handsome, but they are not kind, says Beauty. I prefer you, because you've got a good heart. Thank you, Beauty, says the Beast. Now Beauty is not afraid of the Beast, and she eats a big dinner. The Beast looks at her and asks a question. Do you want to marry me, Beauty? What a question! Beauty is terrified. What can I say? thinks Beauty. She is silent for a moment, and then she says, "No, I'm sorry. I don't want to marry you." The beast is angry, and Beauty is afraid. Then he goes out of the room and says, "Goodbye, Beauty." Chapter Five: The Magic Ring. Beauty spends three months at the beautiful castle. Every day she reads books and plays the piano. She walks everywhere in the big garden. She likes the tall trees and the flowers of different colors. She puts beautiful flowers in the rooms of the castle. Sometimes she makes perfume from the flowers. But the days are long, and she is often lonely. Beauty often thinks about her father, her sisters, and her brothers. I want to see my father again, she thinks sadly. And I want to see my home again too. The beast goes to see her every evening at dinner time at nine o'clock. They talk about interesting things and are happy together. Beauty is not afraid of his ugly face now. Every evening, the beast asks Beauty the same question. Beauty, do you want to marry me? And every evening, Beauty answers, "No." One day, Beauty says, "Why do you ask me the same question every evening?" Because I hope to hear a different answer," says the beast. I'm sorry, I don't want to marry you," says Beauty. The Beast is very sad. But I'm always going to be your friend," she says. "You're a wonderful friend," says the Beast. "And you are too," says Beauty, smiling. "I know I'm terribly ugly," says the Beast. "But I love you a lot." I'm very happy with you. Please don't leave me. Beauty's face becomes red, and she is quiet for a moment. In the mirror of my room, says Beauty, I see my poor father. He's sad and lonely. He thinks I'm dead. My sisters are married, and my brothers are away. I want to see my father for the last time. Can I go and see him, please?
Yes, you can go and see your father, says the beast. But I'm going to be very sad without you. Oh, thank you, says Beauty happily. Please don't be sad, beast. I'm going to come back in a week. All right, says the beast. You can visit your father tomorrow morning, but remember, you must come back in a week. Before you come back, put this ring on a table near your bed. It's a magic ring. Goodbye, Beauty. Chapter Six: The Sisters' Plan. The next morning, Beauty wakes up in her bedroom in her father's house. She gets up and goes downstairs. When her father sees her, he cries, "Beauty, is that you? How wonderful! My daughter is well and she's here." Beauty is very happy and hugs her father. "Get dressed quickly and then tell me about the beast," says her father happily. She goes to her room and finds a chest full of beautiful clothes. This is a present from the beast," says Beauty to her father. "He's very nice and gives me presents every day." She chooses some lovely clothes. "I want to give these lovely clothes to Rosalind and Hortensia," she says. When she says this, the chest disappears. "The beast is watching you," says Beauty's father. "These beautiful clothes are for you and not for your sisters." Suddenly, the chest comes back again. That morning, Rosalind and Hortensia come to visit their sister. They are both very unhappy. Oh, Beauty says Rosalind, "I'm unhappy." Why are you unhappy, Rosalind? asks Beauty. Oh, it's a long story says Rosalind. Please tell me says Beauty. My husband is handsome. And he spends all day in front of a mirror. He never looks at me or talks to me. Oh dear, that's a big problem," says Beauty. Hortensia says, "My husband is very clever, but he doesn't like anyone, and no one likes him. I can never invite my friends to lunch or dinner because he doesn't like them." We've got a lot of problems with our husbands," they say. "My poor sisters," says Beauty. "I'm very sorry." "Tell us about the beast," says Hortensia. "Oh, the beast is not a bad man," says Beauty. "He's very kind. I live in his beautiful castle, and I'm the queen. I don't work. I read, play the piano, and walk in the garden." Every evening, the beast comes to see me at dinner, and we talk about a lot of things. It's wonderful. The two sisters are very angry, and they go to the garden. Beauty wears lovely clothes and shoes, says Rosalind. She's like a queen. She's very happy. Why is she lucky, and why are we unlucky? You're right, Rosalind, says Hortensia. We are not very lucky, but maybe we can be lucky. Beauty has to return to the beast in a week, or he's going to get angry and eat her. Then we must keep her here," says Rosalind. "Then the beast is going to get angry." During the week, the two sisters are kind to Beauty. They talk and laugh with her. They walk together in the country. Beauty is happy with her sisters. Rosalind and Hortensia love me. She thinks they're good sisters, and I love them a lot. At the end of the week, Beauty says, "I must go back to the Beast's castle." But her sisters start to cry. Oh, oh, Beauty says Rosalind. Please stay with us another week. We need you. Yes, Beauty. Says Hortensia, "Please don't leave us. We have fun with you, and we love you." Yes, says Rosalind. Stay with us. We can do a lot of things together. Beauty does not know what to do. 
She decides to stay another week. Chapter 7 The Dream The beast is going to be very sad without me, Beauty thinks. But I want to stay with my family for a few more days. Then I'm going to go back to him. Beauty thinks about the beast. She misses him. Ten days later, Beauty dreams about the beast. In her dream, the beast is on the grass in the garden of the castle, and he's going to die. Beauty, whispers the beast. Today is the tenth day, and you're not here. I can't live without you. I can't eat or drink. Beauty wakes up and thinks, The poor beast is going to die without me. I must go back to him. She takes the ring and puts it on a table near her bed. The beast is ugly, but he's very kind, she thinks. Why don't I marry him? I'm happy with him. My sisters have handsome, clever husbands, but they're not happy. Beauty falls asleep, and the next morning she wakes up at the beast's castle. Today I am going to wear a beautiful dress, Beauty thinks. At nine o'clock in the evening she goes to dinner and waits for the beast. But he doesn't come to see her. What's happening? Beauty thinks. Where's the beast? Why isn't he here? Beast! She cries. Beast! Where are you? Answer me! She opens the doors of all the rooms and looks everywhere in the castle. But she cannot find him. Suddenly she remembers her dream. She runs to the garden and sees the beast on the grass. Oh no! She cries. Is he dead? She listens to his heart and it is beating. Good, he's not dead, she thinks. She gets some cold water from the river and wets his face. The beast slowly opens his eyes. Beauty, he whispers. I'm dying, but I'm happy because you're here. No, beast, cries Beauty. Don't die. You must live and become my husband. I love you and I can't live without you. Chapter 8 The Prince Suddenly, all the lights of the castle and the garden turn on. There are beautiful fireworks in the sky. Beauty is surprised and looks at the castle. Then she turns round and looks at the beast. What a surprise! She sees a handsome young man. Thank you, Beauty, says the young man. The spell is broken. But where is the beast? asks Beauty. I am the beast, says the prince. I don't understand, says Beauty. Who are you? I'm a prince, and this is my castle, says the young man. Sometimes a bad witch puts a spell on a prince, and only true love can break the spell. Now I know your love is true. The prince takes her hand and says, Do you want to marry me, Beauty? Beauty looks at the handsome prince and says, Yes, I do. Beauty and the prince go to the castle. When she opens the door, she is surprised. My family! You're all here! cries Beauty. She is happy when she sees her family. They talk and laugh together. Suddenly, she sees the good fairy from her dream. Beauty, says the good fairy, you've got a kind heart. And you're going to marry the prince and become a princess. Then the good fairy looks at Beauty's two sisters. You're both bad, lazy and unkind, says the fairy. You don't love anyone. The fairy says some magic words and suddenly Rosalind and Hortensia become statues. Oh no, cries Beauty. My sisters are statues. Your sisters have got hearts of stone, says the fairy. Now they can't move, 
but they can see and hear everything. When they understand their mistakes, they can become Rosalind and Hortensia again. The next day, Beauty and the Prince get married. Everyone dances and sings in the castle. It is a happy day. People give flowers to Beauty and the Prince. The Prince sees tears in Beauty's eyes and says, Don't cry, my Beauty. We are going to be very happy together. Listening activity. Here is an example. What does Rosalind want to buy for the summer? I want to buy a new red hat for the summer. But you have already got a pink one. What about a nice blue hat? No, I like red. One. Which shop is next to Marie's hat shop? Well, let's go to Marie's hat shop. Is the shop near the park? No, it's next to the bakery. Oh, I remember. Opposite the library. 2. What does Rosalind want to buy at the bakery? Oh, good. Then we can buy some chocolate biscuits at the bakery. I love them. Me too. I like chocolate cake and chocolate biscuits. Do we need to get some bread too? I don't think so. There is lots of bread at home. 3. What time does Marie's hat shop open on Saturdays? What time does the hat shop open? It usually opens at 9, but today is Saturday and it opens at half past 9. Hmm, we must wait for 15 minutes then. 4. What does Hortensia want to buy for the party? Let's put our coats on and go. OK. Today I want to buy some new white shoes to wear with my white dress for the party. But you have already got nine pairs of white shoes. Listening activity. Here is an example. Where does Beauty's father's ship come from? Good morning. Can you help me? I'm looking for my ship. There are 11 ships in the port this morning. What's the name of the ship? I don't know. It's a big ship and it comes from Italy. There are two big ships in the port. One from England and another from Turkey. No, my ship is from Italy. 1. What is the ship like? Oh, perhaps you're looking for the blue one. No, the ship is red and black. Now I remember. It's near the black ship from Turkey. 2. Who is the captain of the ship? Good. Who is the captain of the ship? I don't know his name. But he is a young man with brown hair. Does he wear glasses? Yes, he does. 3. What time does the captain go to his ship? What time does he usually come here? He usually comes very early, at half past six in the morning, and he goes to his office. Then, at eight o'clock, he goes to his ship. 4. How does he usually travel to work? Does he ride his horse to work in the morning? Well, he usually comes by boat. He sometimes comes here on foot in summer. Thank you. Castles what is a castle? A castle is the home of a king or a very rich family. It protects the people who live there. Castles have got high walls 
and small windows, so they are difficult to attack. Castles are usually near rivers, near the sea, on hills, or on mountains. History of castles. In the tenth century, people built small wooden castles in Europe. In 1066, William the Conqueror attacks England. He is from Normandy in France. He builds the first big stone castles in England. He builds the Tower of London in about 1078. The Normans build about eighty stone castles in England. There are a lot of stone castles in Europe in the twelfth and thirteenth centuries. They are big, and they can protect a lot of people. Let's look at some important castles in Europe. Bodiam Castle, East Sussex, England. This is an old medieval castle, with big square walls and a moat around it. Glam's Castle, Scotland. This big castle has got a long history of ghosts and terrible secrets. It has got more than one hundred rooms. Chenonceau Castle, France. Chenonceau Castle is on the Cher River in the famous Loire Valley. There are a lot of beautiful castles in this valley. Neuschwanstein Castle, Germany. This castle is like a picture in a fairy tale book. King Ludwig II built it in 1869 as his home. Flowers. There are about two hundred thousand different kinds of flowers in the world. Some are very small, and others are very big, like the giant rafflesia. Let's look at some of these flowers. Flowers that grow in the desert. Some flowers grow in the desert. They need hot weather, but they do not need much water. Some of these flowers are the Apache plum, the desert lily, the yucca, and the prickly pear. Flowers that grow on water. Flowers like the lotus, the water lily, and the Louisiana iris grow in water. These flowers need very warm weather. You can see them in ponds and lakes. Tropical flowers. There are hundreds of beautiful tropical flowers in Hawaii and in the islands of the South Pacific. Hawaiian orchids are famous everywhere. Hawaiians make leis. They are colorful flower necklaces. They wear them and give them to tourists. Flowers as decorations. People use flowers as decorations for festivities like birthdays and weddings. On Saint Valentine's Day, the favorite flower is the red rose. Flowers in art. Flowers are the favorite subject of a lot of painters. Van Gogh, Monet, and Cezanne all paint flowers. Van Gogh is famous for sunflowers, and Monet is famous for water lilies. Flowers we can eat. Did you know that you can eat flowers? Some of the vegetables we eat are flowers. Broccoli, cauliflowers, and artichokes are flower vegetables. In Japan, people like eating cherry blossom soup. Some people make tea with rose petals, and others put them in salads. Flowers and perfumes. People make wonderful perfumes with flowers. Like roses, jasmine, violets, lilacs, orange blossoms, red tulips, and peonies.